reason and what's your reason hey existing were we born to die let it stop good morning good afternoon today oh today's principle is near your purpose to make our collective vocation um the building and development of our community in order to restore our people to their traditional greatness. That is the purpose. That is our purpose, our Nia. Uh, a good song to bring that uh, principle into play and to focus the energy around the house is uh, uh, I'm so glad that he let me try it again. The last time around, I lived the whole world of sin. I'm so glad that I know more than I knew then. Gonna keep on trying till I reach a higher ground. All right. And the poem for the day. Poem about my rights. That could be a thought for the day. Poem about my rights by June Jordan. Wow. Wow. Huh. Poem about my rights. Even tonight, I need to take a walk and clear my head about the this poem about why I can't go without changing my clothes, my shoes, my body posture, my gender identity, my age, my status as a woman, alone in the evening, alone in the streets. Alone not being the point. The point being that I can't do what I want to do with my own body because I am I am the wrong sex, the wrong age, the wrong skin. And suppose it was not here in the city, but down on the beach or far in the woods, and I wanted to go there by myself thinking about God or thinking about children, thinking about all the world, all of it. Disclosed by the stars and the silence. I could not go. And I could not think. And I could not stay there alone. As I need to be. Because I can't do what I want to do. With my own body. And. Who in the hell set things up like this. And in France. They say if a guy penetrates. But does not ejaculate. Then he did not rape me. And if. After stabbing him. And after screams of after begging the bastard, and even if smashing a hammer into his head, it even if after that he is and his buddies fucked me, after that, then I consented, and then there was no rape because finally you understand. Finally they fucked me over because I was wrong. I was wrong again to be in me. Being me, where was I wrong to be who I am? Which is exactly like South Africa penetrating into Namibia, penetrating into Angola. And does that mean I do not know uh, how do you know if Pretoria ejaculates or will the evidence look like the proof of the monster jackboot ejaculation of black land and if after Namibia and after Angola and if there's Zimbabwe and if after all my kinsmen and women resist even to self immolation of the villages and if after that we lose nevertheless what will the big boys say will they claim my consent do you follow me we are the wrong people of the wrong skin on the wrong continent. And what the hell is everybody being reasonable about this? And according to the Times, this week, back in 1966, the CIA decided that 
they had this problem, and the problem was a man named Nkrumah. So they killed him. And before that, it was Patrice Lumumba. And before that, it was my father on campus of my Ivy League school. And my father was afraid to walk to the cafeteria because he said he was the wrong age, the wrong skin, the wrong gender identity. He was paying my tuition. Before that, it was my father saying that I was wrong. Saying that I should have been a boy because he wanted one. A boy. And that I should have been a lighter skin and that I should have had straighter hair and that I should not be so boy crazy, but instead I should just be one, a boy. And before that, it was my mother pleading plastic surgery for my nose and braces for my teeth and telling me to let the books loose. So let them loose. In other words, I am very familiar with the problems of the CIA and the problems of South Africa and the problems of the Exxon Corporation and the problems of the white America in general and the problems of the teachers and the preachers and the FBI and the social workers and my particular mom and dad. I am very familiar with the problems because the problems turn out to be me. I am the history of rape. I am the history of the rejection of who I am. I am the history of the terrorized incarceration of myself. I am the history of battered assault and limitless armies against whatever I want to do with my mind and my body and my soul and whether it's about walking out at night or whether it's about the love that I feel or whether it's about the sanctity of my vagina or the sanctity of my national boundaries or the sanctity of my leaders or the sanctity of each other and every each and every desire that I know from my personal idiosyncratic and un indisputably single and singular heart I know that I've been raped because I've been wrong. The wrong sex, the wrong age, the wrong skin, the wrong nose, the wrong hair, the wrong need, the wrong dream, the wrong geographic, the wrong satoro. I have been the meaning of rape. I have been the problem everyone seeks to eliminate by force, penetration, with or without the evidence of slime. And But to let this be unmistakably, this poem is not consent. I do not consent. I do not consent. I do not consent to my mother, to my father, to my teachers, to the FBI, to South Africa, to bed to Park Avenue, to American Airlines, to the hard islers on the corners, to the sneaky creeps in the cars. I am not wrong. Wrong is not my name. My name is my own and my own is my own is my own. And I can't tell you who the hell set things up like this. But I can tell you that from now on, my resistance, my simple and daily and nightly self-determination may very well cost you your life. Now, in case a lot of you haven't heard that poem before, that poem was by June Jordan. It was called A Poem About My Rights. Wow. It was directed by Desire. It's a collected poem of June Jordan. Uh, she, uh, and um, that is her work. Something that you can ponder on. How it feels to be black in America. Hmm. Interesting. But our purpose, our Nia, is to still to restore our people to traditional greatness. Okay? 
So the activities for the children today should be, um, I mean, let's see. Since the, it's the fifth principle, and it encourages us to make building a better community with the purpose of all that we do. Marching through the city streets is one way that people use their voices and their bodies to speak up about what they believe in and want to see change. After a really long march to a city called Selma, Martin Luther King Jr. rested his tired feet in this bucket. How do you work hard from something that you do that's important? Mm. Martin Luther King lived his life with purpose. He wanted to see the United States become a place where all the people were treated equally, no matter what the color of their skin was. And every day he worked for what he believed in. By talking to the people and peacefully protesting things he knew were unfair. Now, whether you agree with his philosophy or not, you must admit it took courage. Whether you could do it or not, it took courage. Because of the hard work and important words of Dr. Martin Luther King and many others with the same purpose, we live in a place that is a little more fair for everyone. So, today... We can um, make creating a fair world our purpose in everything we do and continue to work, continue the work of Dr. Martin Luther King. So how about you try to draw a poster and have words that tell others how you'd like to make the world a better place? That would be right on purpose. And you would be in your knee. So, with that being said, I will see you in the next 